I want to go over a different way to pass data from an ASP.NET MVC controller to the view. And first I want to talk just a little bit about the default mechanism. Um, the default mechanism is in a controller's action, there's this, when you return view, by default you're going to look for the view with the name of the action. And view data that's being passed through, there's this view data property, and it's a string index to type collection. And to be honest, I'm, I'm really not thrilled about string indexers. Um, number one, it's sort of hard to guess. You can mistype them. And later on, if you have to, you know, if you rename uh, something on the index, it's sometimes kind of hard to find all the references. You know, you're going to have to do a find in files here, that type of thing. So you can see here on uh, the test, I'll go ahead and take a look at the test. Uh, .aspx as well. And when you're referencing the data, because this is a name to object, so this is you know a, a dictionary of names to actually objects, you end up having to use the string indexer. And then if you want to get at the properties, so for example, you know, for example, this is of type I index view data. So if I want to get into having um, the properties pop up, for example, IntelliSense or what have you, I'm going to have to access the view data, do a cast, and then I can go ahead and access the properties of the type that's being passed through. So, you know, this works. It's it's not, you know, the most horrible thing in the world or what have you, but it's definitely, it's, I, I, I'm not comfortable with it. I don't really, I prefer not to use this implementation. So, I want to demo a different implementation, and I, I've created a different way to pass data through. And what I did is I created what's called a type instance dictionary. And what it does is it's a dictionary indexed by type, and it does support multiple instances of the same type, but you have to provide some type of ID. And you can do an integer ID, a string ID, or you can specify the type of the instance ID. So you could use, and most likely, something like an enumeration. Um, so this type instance dictionary uh, has based three basic functions. There's a contains to check to see if the dictionary contains a particular type. There's an add to add a dictionary entry of a particular type. And then there's a git, so you can retrieve back out the type that was added previously. So how does this work? So let's go back. We can look in the home controller. And here I've implemented the index such that when I create an iIndex view data, you can see I go ahead and set my data just like before. But now what I have is I've added a property, and I'll go over this actually, it's in the base controller. I've added a property called type view data, and this is a type instance dictionary. So you can say dot add, I can specify the type that I'm adding and go ahead and pass through the view data. And then I return back the view, and what, when you pass an argument like this into the return, the, action, the view action result, this is going to set the model property on the view so that you can ac access this data that's passed through from the controller to the view. So real quickly, I want to take a look at the base controller. And here you can see I've added this type view data property. It's of type iType instance dictionary. It's initialized in here, and it provides the property to get and set. So this way, in your derived controllers, in your actions, you just will use this particular property to set the data that's going to be passed through to your view. So let's look on the other side in the view where it's being consumed. So let's look in the index.aspx. And here what you can see now is you can say, model, which is, is a property on the, the view page. And you can say get, and you can pass in the type, I index view data. And then here, the return type is typed. So you don't have to do any casting. I mean, in a sense, maybe the you know templated argument could be a cast. But I tend to like this implementation uh, a, 
a little bit better than this syntax here where I have a string indexer and then I have to do this casting to get at the actual type of the member of the, the, the view data. So in this case, it's a little different. You know, the model, I, I can ask the model, call get, you know, pass in the type that I'm looking for. And again, this dictionary contain, can contain multiple entries of different types, and you just have to pass in the type that you're looking for, and then you get a strongly typed return with IntelliSense and everything. So it's, and, and here's the pages. It ends up, you, they, they look the same. So here's the test page with the view data being passed through, and here's the, you know, using the, this is using the, um, type instance dictionary and the, the previous was using the uh, view data, the standard mechanism. Um, one key here is that you do want to, there's templated versions of, for example, the view page, the master page, and in the view page, when you pass in into the templated version, you want to pass in the type of the instance dictionary, and the type is ttc.tools.itypeinstancedictionary. And then what happens is this sets the type of the model property. And that's how you get the um, strong typing of the model property. It's through the templated version of the few page class. So if you're using the type instance dictionary, um, let me get back to the home controller. So if you're using the um, type instance dictionary to pass data through from your controllers to your views. Number one, you're going to want to derive them all from a base controller. Go ahead and set up that, uh, call it whatever you want, but call it you know, something about the type view data. And you have to always make sure to return the view and pass through that property. That way the model property will get set on the view and you can access the data that was passed through from your controller to your view. So hopefully this is a good enough explanation to show sort of how this is different, why it's hopefully a little better than the default mechanism, and hopefully you'll try it out and hopefully it helps with your coding. So thanks for listening. Take care.